All right. Well, let's. I, I think we we're gonna get started since we were already a little bit behind here. Fostering innovation here with with technical issues. This is all part of it. It's great to see this be a virtual platform. Oops, one more that needs to get in here. There you go. All right. Hi, Mike. So I am going to to kick this off now. So I am Mila Molgard. I am with Launch Minnesota, an initiative of our state's economic development and workforce agency known as DEED. We are fortunate in Minnesota to that our governor and our legislators and leadership with DEED allocated dollars to support the acceleration of startups and innovators. Minnesota has a long history of being a place where good ideas began and grow. Launch Minnesota is building on this momentum and creating an environment to support entrepreneurs, nurture tech startups, with the goal of fostering an innovation ecosystem across the state. I am really proud of the traction we've made in under a year, especially during this unprecedented time in our economy. We are increasing access to capital for high-tech startups, we're developing entrepreneurial talent and resources, and creating a statewide network, improving connectivity. A signature piece of Launch Minnesota has been the creation of a statewide network, we're calling Launch, the Launch Minnesota Network, comprised of more than 60 entrepreneurial support organizations representing six regions. This is the aspect that we will be focusing on today. Launch Minnesota is organized in a hub and spoke model that allows each region to customize its offerings while still enabling entrepreneurs to access statewide resources and best practices. The hubs were created through a competitive grant process earlier this year. We asked organizations to look beyond their city, beyond their organizations, to prioritize the needs of entrepreneurs. The Launch Minnesota Network is bringing people from different sectors and organizations to really streamline startup services and improve coordination and capacity across the state with an ultimate goal of simplifying and reducing barriers for startups and entrepreneurs. The remainder of this panel, you will have the privilege to listen and learn from our hub leads. So as they're gonna start here, show and demonstrate their traction towards meeting some of these state goals. Our first speaker, I have the privilege of introducing Dave Hangel. He's with the executive director of Greater Bemidji, and he's also an advisory board member for Launch Minnesota. We wanted to make it easier, or do want to make it easier for entrepreneurs to navigate resources and increase regional connectivity. That takes collaboration. Tell us how the creation of your network, uh, named now NOW, small o, right, w, uh, the now navigators are working and reaching this goal. Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks, Neela. And greetings from up north. Um, as Neela mentioned, I'm the executive director of Greater Bemidji, and we also host the launch pad underneath our umbrella up here in Bemidji, Minnesota. But I'm part of this uh, 14 uh, network of 14 different partners working together all throughout Northwest Minnesota to support startups in our part of the state. You know, we have a rich history, as Neela said, it throughout the state, but also in Northwest Minnesota uh, in terms of entrepreneurship from Polaris, Articat, DigiKey, Marvin Windows, all these big Minnesota companies started in Northwest Minnesota. So we kind of understand the importance and the power of entrepreneurship. And that's why we're so excited to be a part of this Launch Minnesota network uh, that we're a part of uh, throughout the state. You know, our, our partners in Northwest Minnesota share a drive to reach out to what we like to call our latent entrepreneurs. And those are those uh, of you out there who have great ideas, but it never occurred to you uh, to act on your ideas so that you could possibly be an entrepreneur. That, that's kind of something what other people do as opposed to something that I could do. And we have a drive to really reach them. And one of the ways we want to reach them, as Neil mentioned, is just to, is to simplify the process for them. Uh, as you all know, the startup process can be really overwhelming. It's hard to figure out the first step sometimes. And it's hard for us as, a, as professionals who do this every day to figure it out how much harder it is for you as startups. And so 
what, what are we doing to simplify things? Uh, we've created a network of what we call navigators, uh, folks dispersed throughout Northwest Minnesota that are entry points into the ecosystem, uh, that are, are meant to be the place to go that's a little less risky uh, to, to talk to. And those navigators will take an individualized approach in surrounding each entrepreneur with the resources they need specific to their needs. In that way, the navigator needs to understand the, all those resources uh, that we uh, have available to us, but the entrepreneur doesn't necessarily have to. So they can focus on their own company. And so our hope is that those navigators build a very trusting uh, relationship with the entrepreneurs. So the entrepreneur feels uh, they don't need to fully understand the process and fully understand those resources. Rather, they just need to work with your navigator to get there. Last point I'd like to make, the key to our model is sharing expertise uh, and resources throughout the region and also accessing all those resources that are available across the state. And this, this network, the, the Launch Minnesota network that we've created uh, statewide is, has really opened my eyes uh, to the opportunities and the resources we have. And so a key to that is to share those resources across the region, which can be very hard. Uh, our region is big. It's five hours from corner to corner. And so to build that trust is so critical and important to us, but I think we've been uh, successful in doing so. So in the end, and ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to reduce the risk for entrepreneurs by making simplifying the process and bringing them very targeted resources to their needs. Great, thank you, David. It's been great to see those organizations hours apart, still coordinated and working together. Next, we're going to talk to Stacy Nemo, the executive director with Red Wing Ignite. They are convening 14 different organizations in Southeast Minnesota. And we are both joining today from Red Wing. So one of the goal, another goals with the Launch Minnesota Network is to increase the capacity of our entrepreneurial support organizations and really building off the strengths of each of those organizations. Stacy, could you share some of those um, joint services and events that these organizations are doing together? Um, yes, absolutely, Mila, and good morning. Um, so the E1 stands for Entrepreneurs First, and we span 11 counties throughout Southeast Minnesota. And the very first day of our welcome meeting for our E1 partnership um, collaborative also happened to be the day that the statewide shutdown was announced. Um, so in true entrepreneurial spirit, we sought to overcome and work through our challenges as quickly as possible. Our collaborative face-to-face -face pitch event was supposed to happen in only six weeks. So we quickly adapted to, be, uh, to have it presented virtually. And we are excited that our finalist Sherpa was announced as a division finalist in the Min Cup. And so we're cheering, uh, we're, we're cheering all of the finalists now on. Um, the E1 also initiated regular office hours, a webinar series entitled Tech Talks, and we offer technical assistance funding to Southeast Minnesota entrepreneurs. And what we have realized is a greater degree of outreach is possible um, with our virtual offerings because it has made our opportunities more accessible for those residing in rural areas. Uh, the E1 website, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter account as well as our early stage aggregated calendar of events and educational opportunities, give an overview of the assistance available. And currently we meet two times a month and every call we feature an entrepreneur for the first 20 minutes of every call. And um, as a group, we work to offer support and guidance to that entrepreneur. Um, this coming Friday, we're excited about our E1 Expo event, which is going to be held virtually as well. We've pivoted to a virtual swag bag, and the focus is on bringing city and regional leaders together, along with entrepreneurs in a discussion on the benefits of entrepreneurialism in our cities and rural communities. Um, but more than anything, as a collaborative we've really been making a concerted effort to connect one-on-one -on -one with entrepreneurs in our area to really talk to them about what they need. And then we work amongst ourselves to help make those connections based on the strengths of the various partners. Wonderful. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, it's incredible to see all the, the different things happening in Southeast Minnesota. You are, uh, all of you are staying very busy. 
Yes. All right. We're, we're now going to move to Southwest Minnesota, and we have Mike Hahn, the regional director of the SBDC there in Mankato. SBDC works with many small businesses and provides an array of expertise. Mike, your office is, is based with the University of Mankato, and I know you're you're working with entrepreneurs throughout Southeast Minnesota, connecting them to your services and others. Could you help share some of the ways that you're connecting uh, these entrepreneurs to help start and scale their business ideas? Sure, Neela, thank you. And uh, we're, with, uh, we're hosted within Minnesota State University, Mankato. And from our standpoint, what we have done is uh, we are part of a community organizers group that uh, works with uh, One Million Cups Mankato. One Million Cups is something that was started here about three years ago. It grew from a monthly to event to where it's a weekly event where we do it virtually. And one of the things that we wanted to kind of do as part of One Million Cups and, and with Launch Minnesota kind of serving as that hub is make sure that people recognize us as more of a regional center than just Mankato. And with One Million Cups, which is a weekly event, uh, we've been successful essentially in hosting um, remote events. This was even before the pandemic. We had uh, a community in our rural areas, which uh, we said, hey, give us two entrepreneurs. We'd like to feature them. We can beam them back here to Mankato. You can have be the center of the activity at your own rural community, and then we will beam it back. Um, and it started pre-pandemic from the standpoint that we were able to feature those uh, entrepreneurs from throughout our region. And it's really kind of created that core and kind of that spirit of uh, cooperation. So what we do here with the SBDC, as many of you know, what the functions of the SBDC is our call is face-to-face -face consulting as far as with businesses. Uh, with Launch Minnesota basically taking off when the pandemic started, uh, we had to pivot as well. We had to do a lot of financial triage work uh, with our businesses to basically help them get through the downturn and uh, continue to do that as we speak. But, uh, you know, I think what Launch Minnesota has done as a hub has really helped us come together as a region. The barriers are not what they were. Uh, even from an internal standpoint, uh, we are working much more collaborative, to, collaboratively uh, with, in addition to the SPDC, other partners as part of the university. Part of this is the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship and also the uh, Center for Workforce and Professional Education. So with that, we are extending our assistance out uh, within the communities. We have various economic development regions that are currently working with us on this. We meet monthly as well. And our big colleague within this uh, collaborative is the Greater Mankato Growth, which also has a regional approach to economic development. Um, you know, one thing the pandemic has done is kind of forced us to kind of rethink things and how to deliver our services differently. And one of the things that we're doing here this next week is we're hosting what's called a consulting cafe where people can go to uh, essentially uh, an event online. They can go into different rooms with a consultant with a different discipline, everything from uh, financial packaging to business planning to marketing. And that will be held next Tuesday, uh, October, excuse me, September 22nd from 7.30 to 9 p.m. And you can get that information off our website at myminnesotabusiness.com. So, you know, we're kind of in this uh, beginning stages. Uh, working together is something different, but we're happy to be a part of the hub for Launch Minnesota that's, that's bringing us together as one region so that we can uh, basically work with those companies and get them to that next level so that uh, we can get some more technology growth in this part of our region. Well, well, thank you, Mike, and we're, we're happy you are part of, of the Launch Minnesota Network and one of our hubs, so it's, it's a joy to work with you. We're gonna, move now, we're gonna move now to the Twin Cities, um, and you're gonna hear from our hub, Forge North, first. Um, Meg Stewart's not a, a stranger to any of you. Uh, she's the manager of Forge North and has a tremendous history with Twin Cities Startup Week and the Twin Cities Startup Community. Meg, it's great to have you part of this network. Um, could you just please share with everybody, if, if they do not know, about the goals of Forge North and, and that role that you play connecting and convening the Twin Cities market? Um, and and to 
if you could take a little bit of the uh, time on that, the aspect of risk capital and what Forge North is doing to address that need in our startup community. Thanks, Neela, and thanks everyone for joining us today. As Neela said, my name is Meg Stoyer, and I did used to work for Twin Cities Startup Week, so I'm glad you're all <laughs> attending here with us uh, in a virtual setting for the first time. I am now the manager of Forge North, a coalition of community partners working towards making this a better startup community and ensuring that the Twin Cities specifically is a place from where people from all backgrounds can start and scale their ventures. So. We have been doing a lot over the last three years to build trust in our community and as Neela talked about, to really convene our community. And so we are housed at Greater MSP, our regional economic development partnership, in an effort to really put entrepreneurship at the center of our regional conversation. And so it's been a really wonderful year, a year and a half now actually, since we formally housed ourselves at Greater MSP and sort of launched um, this new era of Forge North. We started out as a grassroots movement of a lot of really incredible partners, some of what you see on the screen here and many others in the region, and now have really worked under the um, leadership of our Greater MSP board and of our Forge North Leadership Council to set really big goals for our region. And so those three goals uh, revolve around enterprise participation. We're known as a headquarters economy. We have some really great corporations here. How do we ensure that they're all supporting the startup community in a variety of different ways? So really exciting work there. And our goal is to ensure that all $45 billion revenue businesses headquartered here in MSP are actively supporting the startup community. The second is around racial equity. And over the last three months following the murder of George Floyd, we've seen that um, really be in the spotlight more than ever. Um, and so our goal there is to ensure that the racial makeup and the business ownership of local companies uh, mimics our demographic population. So really trying to look at business ownership being about um, 25 to 30% and supporting uh, founders of color specifically um, in getting access to the resources they need to start and scale their ventures. Lots of other aspects of diversity and inclusion that we're focused on, but specifically over the next three years to focus on racial equity. And the last of the goals, as Neela mentioned, is around early stage capital. And so I think we hear oftentimes here in the region that there's not enough money. And I don't think it's that there's not enough money, it's just getting access to it and shifting some of um, our culture around risk and how we access that capital, who's able to provide that capital. And so um, what we're working on with the partners, again, as part of our Launch Minnesota work and as part of our broader Forge North work is around uh, sort of a three-prong approach to improving access to early stage capital. And specifically our goal is to double the amount of companies that receive early stage capital every year. So we see about 115 companies uh, raise a, a, a round of early stage capital each year right now. We're hoping hoping to double that um, to about 230 companies each year. So a big goal over the next three years, but are using this three-prong approach to say, one, how do we educate our founders? And so that's a lot of the work we've been doing through our Launch Minnesota partners. A bunch of those folks you see on the screen, um, Beta, The Coven, Social Impact Strategies Group, uh, Lunar Startups, and Finnovation Lab have been providing education for our entrepreneurs to better prepare them to get investments. So that's really been the first part and something we're working on really actively right now uh, in partnership with all of our um, other Launch Minnesota partners. The second is around educating investors. And so that's something that is in the works right now. We haven't really done it, but we're planning a lot of great things for later this year in 2021 around how do we educate folks that are accredited investors or want to become investors. Um, and that's going to be a big part of the work we do more moving forward to uh, first help the entrepreneurs understand how to access the capital exists that exists, but then let's create more capital for them to access. And then the third component of our goal around um, early stage capital, not racial equity, um, is around national con connectivity. So really looking at how do we market and put Minnesota on the map to national investors. So again, really opening up the possibility to have increased assets to capital here, having the founders educated and able to access that capital. So a lot of big things to come, but um, have learned a lot from our partners in the Launch Minnesota Network, and uh, I'm proud to be representing the, the metro region around our uh, racial equity goal, uh, Mita is doing a lot of that core work right now. So Mila, I will uh, let you turn it over to Andy. Thank you. Uh, and, and thanks for your incredible work. We, we uh, thanks to your efforts, we are getting a lot more um, notice and connections with uh, VC funds across the nation. And so that's fun to, to see them looking at our, our startup community here. 
Um, Andrew Berry is on. Uh, he's the Chief Development Officer from MEDA. Um, and he is also a hub for the Launch Minnesota Network. Andrew, would you please just explain to everybody how MEDA is addressing racial equity and the deployment of this much needed early stage capital to your entrepreneurs? Sure, thank you so much, Neelan. Uh, thanks everybody for attending this uh, important session. Um, MEDA is, uh, is 49 years old. It's a, uh, a business consultancy and uh, CDFI that is focused exclusively on helping BIPOC entrepreneurs succeed. We do this through three services that we call the three M's uh, that all entrepreneurs need to succeed. Management, education, money, and markets. Um, on the money side, which is where you know we'd like to focus today, uh, money is the top need for minority entrepreneurs across the country. Meg is exactly right, though, that it's not a lack of money; it's a lack of access to that uh, to those funds. Um, less than one percent of all equity and venture capital in the country goes to BIPOC-owned businesses. Um, MEDA is working to address this at both a state and national scale by calling attention to that gap in, uh, in funding, which is an important gap. Without equity and venture investment, minority-owned businesses do not have the uh, opportunity to grow without debt service, without, uh, without uh, a debt payment uh, weighing, uh, weighing on their, weighing on their growth. Mita has developed a convertible note product that is designed for BIPOC owned businesses. Um, and we deploy this primarily through our Mita million dollar challenge, uh, which we've done two years now. We've awarded over $2.5 million to BIPOC owned businesses across the country, uh, in convertible note equity. Um, designed to uh, be an interest-free, uh, an interest-only payment for the first three years, and upon a, uh, a funding event would convert to, uh, would convert to equity within, uh, within the company. The goal of the challenge is to show that there is money to be made uh, with minority-owned businesses, with BIPOC-owned businesses. There's uh, there's great untapped potential within, uh, if you consider that less than 1% of the money goes to the fastest growing segment of small businesses. There's uh, incredible untapped potential that we are trying to highlight through our work as well as uh, through the Million Dollar Challenge, um, show, that, uh, show that there's an opportunity for investors to, uh, to, uh, to make money. Um, included in the included in the challenge is also our boot camp for sex, sex, successful pitches. We have found uh, in working with our uh, our clients and uh, and the challenge entrants that uh, they haven't been given specific training around how to uh, successfully pitch for for funding. So uh, prior to the the finals. Uh, prior to the finals, we provide uh, access to a marketing firm to help them with the uh, marketing aspects of their of their pitch. A public speaking coach uh, to help in the delivery of the pitch as well, uh, the pitch, as well as a uh, a uh, venture capitalist to help them with the uh, value proposition uh, uh, of their of their pitch. Um, as I've said, we've done this twice now. Uh, we'll be launching our third one. Uh, October 15th. We are hoping to be having our finals this month with uh, Twin City Startup Week, but as uh, with all best laid plans during a pandemic, uh, those uh, uh, the timeline didn't work. So we'll be uh, launching our applications next month um, with a finals and awarding uh, a total of a million dollars in uh, in equity to BIPOC owned entrepreneurs in uh, in January. Um, so. Uh, thank you uh, for this opportunity, Neela, and thank you to everyone for, again, uh, for tuning in. Well, thank you for your work. I love that. Uh, three M's. That's a, that's a good one to remember. We are now going to move John Stavig. He is the director of the Home Center for Entrepreneurship at the University of Minnesota. We are thrilled that the University of Minnesota has, uh, is our statewide partner. And we have, in just the last handful of months, done incredible things together. So, John, why don't you share about your efforts and, and 
all the, the good programming that you have in place. Great. Thanks, Neela. And, uh, you know, we're, the university is really excited to be part of this network and share, you know, all of the, the content, the education, the seminars and different uh, networks that we have with entrepreneurs across the state. So this is timely for us. We were, you know, fortunately testing a lot of online and starting to roll things out at our campuses early this year. And we've got a number of courses. I just put a uh, link in the chat that you can go to the website that summarizes the, the resources available. But what I really want to highlight are some quarterly courses and webinars that we'll be starting up within the next 10 days that are available and free to entrepreneurs. So we've been you know, developing courses over the last decade around lean startup principles. We've you know, uh, coached and tested over 400 concepts as part of a National Science Foundation program that we're one of the uh, national sites for. And we've sent uh, about 25 teams now on to uh, the national organization for that. Um, so I think we've got a great capability in terms of the faculty members, people like Carla Pavone, Dale Nugent, Martha Sewell, and the same people who've been delivering the workshops within the university, really working with all the researchers and scientists and other innovators across the university are now freely available for entrepreneurs across the state. So the value proposition design course will kick off next Wednesday. Uh, it's around lean startup concepts, around customer discovery, around developing a commercialization path for, for individuals that are committed to putting in the work in terms of the customer discovery. Uh, we pair them up with mentors and it's a great way in a series of five biweekly sessions on Wednesday evenings to really test your concept or accelerate it. And I think with all these programs, it's important to emphasize this isn't a replacement for some of the other programs or something in lieu of, you know, the great regional resources that you've been hearing about. This is a great way to, to get moving forward and, and also get connected uh, with the local resources. So uh, hopefully you're doing both of those, but the, the course again, starts on September 23rd. Uh, there, there's mentoring assignments and work in that and an actual certificate. If you complete that, if you have less ability from a time perspective in terms of committing, we also, uh, customized for Launch Minnesota, a webinar series that will start on the 28th, that on Monday uh, early evenings is available. And, and that's more of an introduction to the tools and highlighting some of the companies, some of the, you know, Ceronics Renewables, the Abilitex, the Bird Spokes, Stos, uh, a couple of the Min Cup winners this year uh, have gone through these workshops and sharing what they learned going through this process, how they applied some of those frameworks. And it's a good chance to see uh, how this might apply to your business, start to have some uh, dialogue and discussions with both uh, instructors as well as some of the people who've recently gone through that process. So that's a good way to get a taste for that. Uh, we also have a number of seminars that are organized by the Home Center, by the Technology Commercialization Office, by uh, different areas within the university, by Home Center outreach programs like Minnesota Cup and Grow North. So if you go to that link there are seminars uh, around you know raising capital around intellectual property around a lot of different industry specific areas as well so we're trying to make all the resources that we used to have on campus and kind of focused on our you know students and faculty open that up and make those available to everybody in the state and then just lastly i want to plug the uh, the minnesota cup which you know jessica berg and jamie bartlett have done a phenomenal job this year in terms of keeping that going online and without missing a beat. So Tuesday, we will have a live streamed event from the McNamara Center and have 18 of the top startups in the state. We will give away $500,000 in non-dilutive cash prizes that hopefully will be a, a great next step for the businesses going forward. So we're excited to be part of the program. Take a look at those sites. If there are questions, I'll also add my, my email. Uh, into the chat would be glad to discuss what programs are appropriate for you and encourage you to take advantage of these resources. Thank Thanks, you, Neil. John. Uh, the education component of our legislation is, is paramount. We know startups need this knowledge to start their business, and we're so grateful for the expertise that the University of Minnesota is providing this. Uh, I will be attending virtually MinCup 
final event. I don't know if it's going to have the same energy that it usually does with the, the halls brimmed with people, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the awards on Tuesday. Another organization and region that has really focused on education is our West Central region. And so today we also have Larry Hosh, the Business Development Director of Greater St. Cloud. Larry, why don't you explain a little bit about the efforts you have um, providing the Lean Startup training to your entrepreneurs. I know you've been very busy recruiting entrepreneurs uh, to both that class and the, the Generator, the, the G-Beta um, new accelerator program there. Great, thank you, Neela. Um, I'll try to make this quick so we oh, have some time for questions. Muted. Can you hear me? No? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Neela. Um, I'll try to make this quick so we have some time for questions. Um, appreciate being here today. Um, I'm from uh, the greater St. Cloud region, but um, we are um, part of the West Central Business District for the Launch Minnesota Network. And that includes the communities of Alexandria, Fergus Falls, Morris, Moorhead, and Brainerd. Um, just a little bit of background about the work that we've done. Um, we're, we're the home to Great North Labs, which is um, one of the Midwest's largest um, um, early stage venture capital funds. And, and that's really an asset um, and an opportunity that we have in this area that um, when we asked ourselves, what can we do to leverage um, these opportunities? One of the things that we said is we really need to be very um, concerted and, and um, a, a directed effort towards making sure that we have a pipeline of entrepreneurs in our region. So we really focus on the educational aspect of things. Um, we were able to bring in um, the Generator G Beta program into the greater St. Cloud region. We did this through 18 different sponsors. And th the sponsors um, in, in included three colleges, Great North Labs, um, the largest um, healthcare system in central Minnesota, um, eight traditional businesses, three professional service uh, businesses, utilities, and then also the Greater St. Cloud Development Organization. And when we set up um, the G-Beta um, Early Stage Accelerator Program, um, we realized that um, this was another great asset to have in our region, but we also needed to have a, a more robust pipeline that feeds into the, the G-Beta program and, and businesses that are ready to participate in the accelerator. So we really worked um, with ILT Studios to uh, develop a program that can provide the education to entrepreneurs. Um, it's not the serial entrepreneur that we need help with. It's engaging those aspiring entrepreneurs and those who don't even know they're an entrepreneur but have a good idea that need to be um, supported and, and accelerated throughout the process. So we've really focused on awareness, um, providing education, um, making sure that our organizations are connected and provide the support and connectedness to our entrepreneurs. And then if we do that, finally and ultimately, then they can access resources, whether it be through a venture capital fund, an accelerator, or those other traditional models. Um, through the ILT um, studios and their programming, um, they're going to be offering a Lean Startup Innovation Series. It's a 20-week certificate program um, that will be supporting our entrepreneurs. And we really see that as being the pipeline into you know, the accelerators like the G-Beta program. Um, then provide that additional support through those accelerators and hopefully be able to access venture capital. Um, so we've really tried to, um, you know, the Launch Minnesota Network has really forced us to asset map, take a look around us on what assets do we already have. Um, we already have a lot of the different supporting organizations. Um, it's just they were operating in silos or, or within their own within their own boundaries and making sure that all those resources are linked together, communicating together and working collectively. Um, so that's what we're really trying to do with the West Central Business District. The Launch Minnesota Network has really forced us to do that, um, to make sure that we're not just looking at our immediate community, but all the communities around us. Um, because it's not just the entrepreneur in our backyard, it's the neighboring entrepreneur, it's the one right down the road. It's making sure that if somebody has an aspiring idea that they know that they have the network and support around them um, to really help um, um, carry that idea through. Um, so that's what we've been doing in the West Central Business District. Um, we're excited about the first year. We've been able to engage um, over 175 unique entrepreneurs over the last six months. And we just really see that as being the start and, and really getting that, that ball rolling. So. Thank you, Larry. That has been clear with your efforts that you are all building off of each other's strengths in your region. So thank you for your work. The next section, we're gonna do a quick round robin. 
Now, as you've heard from several of us, this Launch Minnesota Network officially kicked off right during COVID, so impeccable timing. But each of these organizations that you've heard from and each of these individuals had to instantly pivot their programs, their services. Um, many were responding to the emergent uh, needs of our businesses with the new emergency loan programs. Um, their world was changed upside down and inside out to best serve startups. But yet, even with these obstacles, I have seen tremendous progress. And so I thought it would be good if we just real quick, one, one statement, if we'll go in reverse order, if you could just share one way uh, that your region is serving entrepreneurs differently, better since being part of the Launch Minnesota Network. Larry, why don't we start with you? Sure, and I alluded to this a little bit before, but the Launch Minnesota Network really made us look outside of just ourselves and make sure that we're working with others. Um, so, I mean, the, the West Central Business District for our case in particular, involved multiple other communities in just the greater St. Cloud region. And I think that's really helped strengthen our work. Um, and, and if you take a look at, you'll be seeing a press release here shortly on the, um, the uh, participating companies in the next G beta cohort. Um, they are a, a collection of entrepreneurs throughout Minnesota. And um, we wouldn't have been able to do that without um, the work that Launch Minnesota um, asked us to do and we're happy to do. Thanks, Larry. John. Yeah, I think for the, the companies coming through the value proposition design class, we've been able to pair them up with mentors, which typically, you know, has been limited to, um, you know, courses or Minnesota Cup or other programs. But I think we, we saw a pool of resources available uh, of mentors in Minnesota Cup and other areas around the university that we're starting to make available. So we have a, a platform now where entrepreneurs win and identify entrepreneur, uh, you know, advisors and mentors that they want to work with and are starting to make that pairing initially through this value proposition design class. Great. Thanks, John. And more to come on that. <laughs> um, the, let's go next to Meg. I think that this has caused us to come together more than ever. So we used to meet every other week as an ecosystem here in the Twin Cities. We now meet weekly via phone. It's a little bit easier for everyone, but I've been able to bring back some really great learnings and things we're seeing in other regions to the Metro and vice versa, share that with others. I know Neela um, has been working with Collider down in Rochester and the Coven here in the Twin Cities to talk about co-working spaces. So I think more than ever having um, structure in which to collaborate has been a really powerful component of growth and development here in our ecosystem and across the state. Thanks, Meg. Yes, we have over about 20 different co-working spaces um, that are collaborating and, and meeting on a regular cadence. So that's been fun to see during this time. Andy. Yeah, I would say that our work with uh... Uh, Launch Minnesota has made us really focus on uh, on the profile of of tech focused, uh, high potential, high growth, BIPOC owned businesses, and identifying them and uh, and expanding uh, some of our education offerings and our market opportunity offerings uh, to include them. So it's really broadened uh, uh, to an extent us reaching outside our traditional um, comfort zone uh, when looking for uh, for BIPOC companies to work Great. with. Great. Thank you. Mike, just a, one thing. Yeah, I would just say just to kind of uh, back off, back on what Meg said earlier, structure, uh, providing us the hub with that structure and the network so that, uh, you know, um, once we have those companies profile uh, we also have someone that we can talk to with indeed that uh, we can kind of open up that structure statewide great stacy um, working with launch minnesota has really true uh, truly helped us to break down some of the silos that exist across multiple organizations so we can truly le le leverage our strength and better serve entrepreneurs in our area great and dave Final yeah, comment. Would, yeah, final comment. Very quickly, uh, you know, very much what everybody else said, which is 
Launch Minnesota, we have 14 organizations that have very broad missions. Launch gave us a laser-like focus to focus on, which, which really brought everybody together. And so instead of one large region, we're talking about one community now uh, in Northwest Minnesota, which is very powerful. Great. All right, and we want to open up to questions and answers. We started a little bit late, but hopefully still have some time here. If anyone has questions for any of our hub leaders or any other program partners, on the, the website here, launchminnesota.org, if you go to that under community, you'll see our Launch Minnesota network, all of the websites, all of the partners, um, and so you can reach all of the information that they've shared today uh, by going under community on that website, on our website, launchminnesota.org. Is there any questions from anyone else? Okay, well, I will close it then. Give it a little, if anyone has any last questions. I know we have to wait longer on these video calls than in person, right? But, all right, well, thank you. It's really an honor to be serving Minnesota's startup community and I'm grateful for the opportunity today to share this great work of these wonderful individuals and organizations across Minnesota. And together we really truly are growing Minnesota's innovation economy. Thank you so much, everybody, and uh, be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.